All right, we'll give it a couple minutes here. Yeah, I think. Although we have a lot to cover. We do have a lot to cover today. I guess we could go ahead and start with highs and lows. Yeah, sure. Reese, how about you? Highs and lows? Well, um, I guess my low is I'm sick right now. Oh, no. Yeah, so that's why me and Kern are separated. Um, I guess my high is Thanksgiving's coming up, so Woo. it's full next week. So, yeah. yeah. Now, are you getting tested? Probably my parents are going to make me, so. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's wise. I mean, not that it really changes anything. So you just got to kind of walk it out. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, we will definitely keep you in prayer. I know there's Isaac was just tested today too, so yeah, he may sick. show up, but he's still not feeling very good either. So, how about you, Corinne? Um, I my high is that next week for basketball we have no practice because they're cleaning the school. So that oh, is wow. very happy. I'm very very good news. Um, and I think my low is probably um, a new trimester just started for school, and I'm already kind of bombarded with um, work. So that's not very fun. No. Yeah. And now are you guys are all online again, right? Yeah. Yep. Hi, Helena. Got a high and low for us for this week? Um, I finally got an emotional missing assignment and I had a couple of panic attacks this week. Oh no. Yeah, well there's a lot to panic about these days. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's no fun. No fun. Having had panic attacks myself, I know. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, no fun at all. So all right. Um Miss Lana? Oh, um, you go. Uh, I have to think about it. <laughs> did we do one for the other one? We, we didn't. didn't. We, we skipped, skipped out. We yeah, skipped damn. Out. We were slacking in the last Zoom. Um, wow. Um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, well, no, hi. We, we took a, uh, so uh, we didn't do the full thumb tour, but everybody knows Michigan, right? You have the, the Michigan thumb. So we have a tour that we used to do all the time, uh, going up all the way around the thumb. Uh, but we did drive up to Lexington, one of our favorite places, Lexington, Michigan, uh, on Sunday? Saturday? Saturday. On Saturday. On Saturday. So we drove up to, uh, to Lexington. And um, obviously, they have a beach there and stuff, obviously, way, way too cold. Uh, but that, so, that was, uh, so that was super fun. Um, Lowe's as man, I mean, now uh, we're adding Reese and I know Kate or, uh, and I know that Isaac is not feeling well. Uh, so, um, a lot of people, I mean, I have, I have one, two, I have three, four, four friends that I know of that are hospitalized. One of them, it's him and his entire family that live with him. Um, my brother's not, did I tell you that yet? Paul's not feeling well. Oh, yeah. Um, my sister and her kids, they all um, have it, uh, but not they're lucky it's not so bad. Uh, so it's been unfortunate a week, um, a lot of people getting sick. So what did we talk about last week? Corinne was here. Yeah. Do you remember what we talked about last week, Corinne? Um, I'm like blanking. Um, I remember there was somebody named Rebecca. There you there go. go. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So... Yeah, yep. we talked about Isaac and Rebecca yep. and how they met. Um, so this week we're going to talk about Jacob and Esau. Uh, so today's story, the lesson focus is God can do great things with imperfect people. Which is a good thing. It is a very good thing, yeah. Because uh, lots of imperfect people out there. Like me. Yep. yep. <laughs> yep. Not too many perfect people out there. Like That's Jesus, true. I guess, was the only one. Right. Um, so the big question here is, why would God choose a guy like Jacob who was out to get all he could for himself? Uh, key words for this week. Uh, deception, the act of misleading or deceiving. Um, double dealing, trickery, an ingenuous act intended to dupe someone for personal gain. Deception. Uh, retribution. Uh, I got lots of retribution as a child. Uh, the punishment for an evil act, uh, what one deserves for his or her acts, 
Um, and then endurance, one of my favorite words. It is. Yep, yep. In the New Testament, uh, the word for endurance uh, is hupomone. Yeah, great. My favorite Greek word. Um, I actually just wrote a book about it. So, But anyways, endurance, the ability to withstand hardship or adversity, sustaining a long, stressful effort or activity, lasting, never yielding. All right, so our opening discussion. Today's Bible story has a number of twists and turns some that are quite unexpected. There is also an issue of major sibling rivalry between two brothers. How do you solve sibling rivalry problems at home or similar problems with friends? Normally, I just tell her she's wrong, and I'm right most of the time. So (laughs) It's not too bad with your rivalry because you're usually right. Yeah. See, I was that way. I was the oldest. (laughs) (laughs) So I was the oldest, um, and uh, just by pure cause of size, uh, I was usually right. Um, So, yeah. Uh, Yeah, I don't know. I I don't know if it would. Yeah, I guess it was kind of rivalry with us. Um, you know, there would be things, you know, so I was a seventies child. Uh, and so we had a station wagon, uh, that had, um, a back seat and then we called it the way back. And so it was a seat and it faced the back. And, uh, so everybody wanted to sit in the way back. Uh, so that was a big rivalry. And so we would always argue about who got to sit in the way back, particularly during big trips. Um, and of course, as the oldest, I did not sell my birthright. <laughs> we'll get there, but uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yep. Well, and I definitely did with my brother too. We really just, we were best friends when when uh, we were really little, but yeah, as we got older, definitely had pretty well we everything, so. Yeah. Well, Isaac? Can you hear me? Yep, yep, we're good. So. I'm corn. Yeah. Yeah, we know. We heard, so. All right. We're going to move on, though. So, um, with. Oh, you weren't done yet? Rivalry, just to say, a little bit different back then and much more important, um, as we'll see, because the, the topics of their rivalry really had life. I mean, it wasn't like who gets to sit in the way back. That's true. Uh, yeah, so. All right, so do your parents ever have to step in and make a choice or decision that you may or may not like? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Does it have, well, I mean, I guess, well, okay, for my girls, whenever they would fight Sammy and Shayla, that when I would choose to separate them, then they would sit and fuss about not being able to be together, but Sometimes I had to make that decision yeah. when they were fighting. But then there are rivalry decisions, you know, uh, who's going to watch what show. That's true. Um, My brother and I had definitely had that. Yeah, um, and things like, you know, a lot of times you just you have to make that decision. Although and, kids uh, nowadays, you guys probably all have your phones and stuff, so you can pretty well watch whatever you want on your own and not have to fight over it. <laughs> so when you, so, um, so actually all of you have siblings. Rivalry right now at our house that is going to probably be in progress. We're in the process of maybe moving. I may be staying in this big room, and my brothers are going to be moving over to the smaller room. So yeah. we're trying to see who can keep their room the longest, clean the longest. Oh, nice. And my brothers are already tipped over the bunk beds. Oh, and, no. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. And so- Ryan said, oh, yeah, my room's clean. Then my dad came up and he's like, no. <laughs> yeah. And so so I guess for you guys, when you get into a discussion, we'll call it a discussion, or into a sibling issue, um, say you both want the same thing, uh, do you work it out most often or do your parents step in? If it's with, like, gaming and we can do two-player, then I normally just let them play. But right now I can't. Yeah. So we normally just join down from the bottom t- downstairs TV because yeah. my dad has two Xboxes, one in our yeah. room and one downstairs. All right. How about how about you, Helena? Do, do you you and Kit usually just work it out, or does your mom step in? Kit and I 
I usually punch each other. <laughs> until, one us, until one of us gives up. And then whoever um, gives up first loses the argument. Okay. All right. That's one way to do it. The WWF version of sibling. Uh, how about how about you guys, Reese and Corinne? Yeah. Normally, me and Corinne just use words. I think that we have matured more. I think that we're definitely probably in the Helena Kid territory where we would, you know, get into fisticuffs. But <laughs> now I think we're just kind of like, hey, you're dumb. Wow, <laughs> you're not cool. You have no friends. All right, cool. Talk again in an hour. There you go. Yeah, that's a, that sounds pretty accurate. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, then it's like an hour after that. It's like, what, hey, what was it all about? It's always something so stupid. Yeah. yeah. Well, and when you look back, a lot of times it just was. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so Definitely. So. All right. Why did God give us families? Yeah, That's a loaded question. Yeah. It is a loaded question. Was it punishment? I don't know. <laughs> no. No. I would be completely and totally and utterly lost without mine. Yeah. So, amen. Me too. Amen. Yeah. yeah. All, right. All right. Opening prayer. Um, so you guys can go ahead and mute yourselves just because of the lag. It just doesn't work very well. But go ahead and I will um, I will do the leader and then Miss Alana will, will lead the group. Sounds good. All right. All right. Open our minds and hearts to your word for us today. Hear our prayer, O oh God. When we learn about Isaac's family, let us see how you work through imperfect people. When we learn about the brothers, Jacob and Esau, teach us that you don't abandon us when we make bad choices. When we deceive others because we want to think only of ourselves, forgive us and show us again your enduring love. Thank, Thank you for blessing us and always being with us wherever we go. Amen. This is the story of Isaac. Abraham had a son named Isaac. When Isaac was 40 years old, he married Rebekah. Rebekah was from... Padan Aram. Sounds like a Star Wars film. <laughs> she was Bethuel's daughter and the sister of Laban, the... <laughs> uh, Aramean. Aramean, yeah. Aramean, yeah. Isaac's wife would not have children. Oh, would not. I think that's supposed to be could not. could not. Isaac's wife could not have children. So Isaac prayed to the Lord for her. The Lord heard Isaac's prayer. He allowed Rebekah to become pregnant. While Rebekah was pregnant, the babies inside her struggled. Now that is sibling rivalry with one another. She prayed to the Lord and said, what is happening to me? The Lord said to her, the leaders of two nations are in your body. Two nations will come from you and they will be divided. One of them will be stronger and the older will serve the younger. Well, when the right time came, Rebecca gave birth to twins. The first baby was red. His skin was like a hairy robe. So he was named Esau. When the second baby was born, he was held tightly to Esau's heel. So that baby was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when Jacob and Esau were born. The boys grew up. Esau became a skilled hunter who loved to be out in the fields, but Jacob was a quiet man who stayed at home. Isaac loved Esau. He liked to eat the animals Esau killed, but Rebekah loved Jacob. One day Esau came back from hunting. He tried and weak, was tired and weak from hunger. Jacob was boiling a pot of beans. So Esau said to Jacob, I'm weak with hunger. Let me have some of that red soup. But Jacob said, you must sell me your rights as firstborn son. Esau said, I am almost dead with hunger. So what good are these things to me now? But Jacob said, first promise me that you will give them to me. So Esau made an oath to him and sold his rights as the firstborn son to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil soup. Esau ate the food, had something to drink, and then left. 
So Esau showed that he did not care about his rights as the firstborn son. So what does God say about Jacob and Esau before they were born? Do you remember that in the scripture? What did he say about Jacob and Esau? The firstborn will serve the younger. Yep, yep, the older will serve the younger. I thought it was cool that it actually said that they were struggling in the womb. You know, they didn't have ultrasounds and all the kind of stuff that, that we have today. Uh, so really the only way she would have known that she had twins going on uh, was by revelation. Yep, the so. leaders of two nations are in your body. Two nations will come from you. They will be divided. One of them will be stronger and the older will serve the younger. In these ancient times, the custom was to give special honor and privileges to the oldest son in the family. This special honor was called the birthright, and a blessing went along with it, which usually involved receiving a larger share of the family inheritance and becoming the leader of the family after the father died. But now God was telling Rebecca that this would be reversed with her twin sons, and as predicted, Esau sold his birthright to Jacob, and in so doing, forfeited his right to the inheritance. When Isaac had become an old man and was nearly blind, he asked Esau to go hunting and bring him a meal that he loves, and then Isaac said he would bless Esau before he died. So Esau went hunting. Rebekah was listening when Isaac told this to Esau. Rebekah told Jacob what about what she had heard and told Jacob, Listen, son, you do, not, you do what I tell you. God out to our goats and it's bring supposed to be me, no. yeah. no, I read that yeah. too. I just Go out to our goats and bring me two young ones. I will prepare them the way your father loves them. Then you will carry the food to your father and he will bless you before he dies. Jacob was concerned because Esau was a hairy man and he wasn't. So Rebecca takes the goat skins and put them on Jacob's hands and neck. She also gave Jacob Esau's clothes to put on. Then she gives Jacob the food she cooked and okay. Then she gives Jacob the food she cooked. He took it to Isaac. Isaac questioned how the food was hunted and prepared so quickly. Isaac wants to feel Jacob, but he seems satisfied even though confused because he sounds like Jacob and yet he feels like Esau. Then Isaac said, bring me the food, I will eat it and bless you. Then Isaac said to him, son, come near and kiss me. So Jacob went to his father and kissed him. When Isaac smelled Esau's clothes, he blessed him. All right, Reese. Isaac finished blessing Jacob. Esau came in from hunting and brought his father the meal that he loved. Of course, they both found out that they had been tricked, and then Isaac actually gave the blessing to Jacob and not Esau. When Esau had his heard, heard. he became very angry and bitter. Esau said, his name is Jacob. That is the right name for him. He has tricked me twice. He took away my rights as the firstborn son, and now he has taken away my blessing. After that, Esau hated Jacob and wanted to kill him. Rebekah heard of Esau's plans and told Jacob to go to her brother Laban to hide. So... Jacob and his mother worked together to pull off this charade and deception. Isaac relies completely on his other senses because he cannot see very well, but they fail him. Then when he hears the truth, he will not listen. The blessing is Jacob's, just as God intended, but it comes at a heavy cost. Esau is close to committing murder. The relationship between Isaac and Rebekah is spoiled. Rebekah will never again see her favorite son, as Jacob goes into exile. God remains steadfast with Jacob in spite of his actions. This is one of those times in studying the Bible when we realize we just don't understand God. So do you admire Jacob's cleverness and drive? What do you think? I don't know how much of it was cleverness as it was just chance and you know god's grace that you know it was him instead of esau yeah you know i don't i don't think it was jacob intending to do what he did but you know it happened that way yeah um so what role did rebecca play in the brothers rivalry i, know, I think we just kind of touched on that yeah 
So, you know, with Rebecca, um, a God had spoken to her early on and, and told her while the babies were still in her, in her belly that Jacob was going to be the leader. Uh, you know, so sometimes, and this happened, we saw this happen with Abraham too. And so, Sarah. And Sarah. So God gives us a vision. He gives us an idea um, and tells us, you know, that, that he's going to make this happen in our lives. Uh, and and then we think that God needs help. So uh, so instead of just letting it play out uh, the way it should, uh, you know, we run into a, into circumstances. You know, here the circumstances being uh, that uh, Jacob uh, was not the firstborn, and so he wasn't getting the inheritance. You know, I totally believe that Jacob did not need to practice the deception that he did to make God's will happen. Right. Um, you know, God never calls us to act in a sinful way to lie, cheat, steal uh, in order to make his will happen. Uh, and so when we do that, and we, we can see that when Abraham lies to Pharaoh and then to the other king about uh, Sarah being his sister, uh, and um, uh, we see that um we see that all the way back to, you know, to Adam and Eve when they lied to God or blamed each other. Uh, so um, it's a recurring theme of, you know, God having a plan for our lives um, and then maybe inspiring us. Uh, but we think uh, maybe he's not moving fast enough for us or, you know, we think he needs our help. Um, but I really believe that that all that their deception did while it did bring about what god had predicted um it also brought a lot of negative uh repercussions so so really i see rebecca as doing that so god had given her a vision for jacob um jacob was her favorite uh and um and so she kind of orchestrated this deception uh to uh to bring about what she saw as god oh world. i know what i was gonna say just just the fact that um, you know, I've been talking to Nisa a lot. She's been really uh, pushing on boundaries big time. And so we've been talking about that negative actions bring negative consequences. And we will see that, um, that Jacob has to go through a lot of not great stuff because, uh, probably because of these choices that he made to be deceptive and to you know, and, and for his mother too, you know, like it said, you know, she didn't get to see him again and her favorite son. And I'm sure that that was really hard for her. Um, and, and if they had just trusted God to play out what he had planned for them, the story may have been really different, yeah. but that doesn't stop what God's decisions are. That doesn't stop God's blessings because he's merciful, you know, and, and he gives us grace. And even when we screw up, he's still there to fix our mess, even if we do have consequences. Um, so oh, we're back to the scripture. I guess we'll just start with you again. Okay. When Jacob had stopped for the night, he took a rock there and laid his head on it to sleep. Jacob had a dream. He dreamt, he, yeah, he dreamt mm. there was a ladder that was on the ground and reached up into heaven. He saw the angel of God going up and down the ladder, and then Jacob saw the Lord standing by the ladder. Yeah, and so this is, I mean, you probably, have you, how many of you have heard of Jacob's Ladder? Anybody? Yep, Jacob's Ladder, actually very famous painting as well. Um, big story in the scripture uh, of the angels going up and down before God and, and the Lord standing by the ladder. Isn't that a plasma thing with the electricity where it takes and it shoots the electricity lines up? Um, yep, they actually do call that sometimes the Jacob's Ladder. Yeah, they do. The Lord said, I am the Lord, the God of your grandfather Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. I will give you the land that you are lying on now. I will give you this land to you and I'll give this land to you and to your children. You will have as many descendants as there are particles of dust on the earth they will spread east and west north and mm -hmm. south all the families on earth will be blessed because of you and your descendants i am with you and i will protect you everywhere you go i will bring you back to this land 
I will not leave you until I have done what I promised what I have promised. Then Jacob woke up and said, I know that the Lord is in this place, but I did not know he was there until I slept. Jacob took the rock he slept on and made a memorial to God and called the place called the place Bethel. The Jacob made a promise. He said, if God will be with me and if he will protect me on this trip and if he gives me food to eat and clothes to wear and if I return in peace to my father's house, if he does all these things, then the Lord will be my God. I am setting this stone up as a memorial stone. It will show that this is a holy place for God and I will give God one-tenth of all he gives me. Right, so let's talk about the eight things that God promises Jacob. Land, descendants, that they will spread east and west, north and south. All families on the earth will be blessed. He also says, I am with you. I will protect you. I will bring you back. I will not leave. And this is actually a continuation. Does this sound familiar? Anybody remember? We talked about covenants. Who else has God kind of promised these things to? You guys remember? Isaac? Yeah. Do you remember? The 12 Testaments? Yeah. Uh, nope. No. Abraham. Abraham. He promised yeah. these things to Abraham. So Isaac. We don't started. actually get into that part of Isaac's story either, no. but God actually promises those things to Isaac as well. Yeah. So the, the that's problem. talking about me, right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and then what did Jacob promise God in return? One tenth of whatever he got. Yep, one tenth of whatever he got. Yeah. And well, and the other thing is that he told God, I mean, it was kind of a human promise. Because it's, if you do all of these things that you say that you're going to do for me, then you will be my God. And God doesn't fail. And so God was his God. All right. So now we're going to skip way ahead in Jacob's story. But it's, it doesn't really make sense without the backstory. Esau is breathing threats against Jacob, threatening uh, to kill him and wanting to kill him in his heart. So he runs. He goes to his uncle Laban. He goes to... Um, Rebecca's brother. Uh, he goes to Laban. Um, while there, he agrees to work uh, for Laban uh, because he meets Rachel. Uh, Rachel is one of Laban's daughters, and Jacob falls head over heels. Uh, she was apparently very, very beautiful. Um, so he agrees to work for seven years. Uh, at the end of the seven years, there is a wedding, but surprise, surprise, uh, when Jacob uh, wakes up, uh, it is not, in fact, Rachel that he is married to. It is uh, his, her uh, weak-eyed, I believe is what yeah, it calls it, weak-eyed weak uh, sister. What that means, no idea. I mean, you know, she was not as beautiful as her sister, not as desirable. Uh, so Laban's... And she was the older, older sister. Was, and, the, yep, and she was older. Um, not the one that Jacob wanted, um, but Laban pulls a fast one. Uh, once the wedding is done, it's done. Um, Jacob is not happy, but not a lot he can do about it. And Laban says, hey, we have a, a custom, almost like, oops, I thought you knew uh, that you would have to marry the older one, that the older one would have to be married prior to the younger one, possibly was true uh, in that culture. Uh, Jacob agrees to work for another seven years to receive Rachel, Rachel. as his yeah. wife. Um, during that time, Jacob is wildly successful. Uh, Jacob um, uh, makes a deal that um, any of the blemished, um, so if the coats of the lambs were not uh, clear, uh, that he would receive those. And God gives him this, uh, this thing to do um, that causes uh, more of the babies to be born blemished. Uh, so Jacob's uh, flocks grow incredibly, um, making uh, Laban a little upset. Hey, I'm going to head out, and Laban really isn't happy about that. Laban actually chases Jacob um, and catches up to him, asks Jacob why he treated him so badly, and Jacob's like, well, you know, I didn't think you were going to let me go, 
And uh, Jacob, uh, Laban recognizes God's blessing on Jacob's life and is like, yeah, you know what, I really can't mess with this guy. And so uh, they actually, one of my favorite um, benedictions in the entire Bible is uh, between Laban and Jacob. And um, uh, Laban says, may God see between me and thee while we are separated one from the other. Uh, and basically asking God's blessing on both of them uh, as they separate in peace. Um, and then Jacob heads uh, towards home. And so during the night, Jacob got up and began moving his two wives, his two maids, and his 11 sons across the Jabbok River at the crossing. After he sent his family across the river, he sent across everything else that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man came and wrestled with him. The man fought with him until the sun came up. When the man saw that he could not defeat Jacob, he touched Jacob's leg and put it out of joint. Then the man said to Jacob, let me go. The sun is coming. But Jacob said, I will not let you go. You must bless me. And the man said to him, what is your name? And Jacob said, my name is Jacob. Then the man said, your name will not be Jacob. Your name will now be Israel. I give you this name because you have fought with God and with man, men and you have won. So again, uh, there's a name change that's very important in the Old Testament times. Uh, we know that Abraham and Sarah, it was Abram and Sarai, uh, and God renamed them Abraham and Sarah, um, along with the explanation of that they would be the father and mother of many nations. Um, Jacob, uh, his name means deceiver. So had been true, uh, but God had worked on his heart uh, through his time with Laban. And this is what we actually call a theophany. Many believe this man that is wrestling with Jacob is in actually a God in the flesh. Some people would even say that it is a representation of Jesus himself. The translation there says that he could not defeat him. A better translation or a better understanding of what was going on was that Jacob would not give up. Because uh, certainly we know if this was an angel or if it was God himself, it would have been over really quick. But he renames him now. Your name will be Israel. I give you this name because you have fought with God. And there we have it. Uh, you have fought with God and with men. And you have won. Yeah, and part of his change, I think, also because Laban had tr the trickster, you know. He had. And he had. so, yeah, yeah, a couple times. Yep. So I think it kind of taught him. It wasn't so fun to be on the receiving end. It's true. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But the man said, why do you ask my name? Then the man blessed Jacob at that place. So Jacob named that place Peniel. He said, at this place, I saw God face to face, but my life was spared. Then the sun came up as Jacob left Peniel. He was limping because of his leg. So even today, the people of Israel don't eat the meat, uh, the meat of the muscle that is on the hip joint, uh, because this is the muscle where Jacob was hurt. Uh, and here we see the people of God memorializing this moment, um, even today in, uh, in a conservative and Hasidic uh, Jewish households. They won't eat that meat that is wrapped around the hip bone uh, for this purpose ever memorializing. And the important of do, importance of doing things in your life uh, to bring to mind, uh, like communion, uh, what Christ has done for us. Jacob looked and saw Esau coming with 400 men. Jacob divided his family into four groups. Jacob himself went out before them. While he was walking towards his brother Esau, he bowed down to the ground seven times. When Esau saw Jacob, he ran to meet him. He put his arms around Jacob, hugged his neck, and kissed him. Then they both cried. Do you agree with the idea that sometimes sneaky and dishonorable people can carry out God's plan, why or why not? It doesn't matter if I agree to it. The truth is that he does. Right. Yeah. I mean, all through scripture. Oh, we're all sinful. For and of the course, world. Paul tells us you know, in uh, Romans, for all have He's sinned sin. and fall mm -hmm. uh, short of the glory of God. And, and this is why we need uh, Jesus in our lives. It's why uh, another thing Paul talks about Abraham and we think, well, Abraham, you know, a father of faith, he was saved because he trusted God um, and, he, and he was such a good guy. And that's not the case. Um, Abraham was saved in just the same way that we are. 
sorry, he was saved by his faith. You know, there are many biblical scholars that believe that what Jesus did covered all sin for all time. You know, sometimes we look at the New Testament and we think, well, that's for now. And, you know, it was different back then. And I, I don't pers personally believe it is. Um, God does not operate in time the way we do. And uh, I totally believe that it is God, Jesus, covering the dishonorable people. What do you think about God siding with Jacob? So I don't think God sided with Jacob. I think God had a plan and he was going to work it out. Yeah. And I, you know, and I think we discussed this maybe uh, before we broke last time. And that is that um, Jacob's deceptions did not move forward God's plan. It may right. look like that, but God's plan would have gone forward whether Jacob lied and cheated or not. We get in this thing of, oh, God's got a plan and we think we know what it is. And so, well, we're going to help God. Jacob did not need to do that. I think that there would have been a move forward and the plan would have come into being without the negative impact, without all the deception that went on throughout the story, without the acrimony, without the separation. I mean, the Bible doesn't really talk about what occurred uh, between Esau and Rebecca. Yeah, um, how did, I, how I, did, because we don't know, how, how did Esau even get to the place? Like he's running out yeah. and then gives him a hug yeah. and a kiss and yep. welcomes him as brother. But we don't see that transformation in Esau's yeah. life. Yeah. We don't know how long he was separated from Rebecca. We don't know what it did to Rebecca's relationship with Isaac before he died. Mm -hmm. You know, how did that all impact that? We just don't know. Yeah. Um, but we, we, what I do know is that um, uh, when we insert ourselves into God's plan, the way Jacob and Rebecca did, uh, but it often ends badly. What is a recurring theme in the story plots in the Old Testament? And we kind of touched on that yep. at the beginning of of Zoom together. Um, that you know, a big recurring theme. Uh, there's really two I see. Yep. One is humans are stupid, and we try to rush what God has promised to happen in our timing instead of waiting for his yeah. timing. And yet he still wants relationship with us. He still that, I mean, he shows that he wanted to be with his people, with those who trusted in him and, um, and his grace and forgiveness is, it always blows my mind. It's amazing to me. And of course, the, the second theme we've also talked about, and that is that God uh, uses flawed people and he does that yes. throughout the old and the new testament and it doesn't change because we have the holy spirit within us that we don't suddenly become perfect without flaw yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. It would be nice how comforting is it to know that god can work through any character i thank jesus that he can yes amen for everyone that's attending we are so blessed and thankful uh, for yes. all of your input uh, and uh, we, we look forward uh, to our time with you. Um, we will be putting out uh, a schedule as we go into the Christmas season uh, because both Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve fall on Thursdays. Uh, so we will not be holding the Zooms on those Thursdays. Um, we, but we will we'll be, be doing, posting. Yeah, we'll videos. be posting videos. Um, but because our curriculum still has like a schedule that we got to keep up with. So well, we don't have to, but we have chosen to. Keep we up with. we choose to. We choose to. <laughs> she chooses to. She's all about that. I'm more flexible. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be interesting to see if that's actually still in the video when it goes up. But okay, it will be. Okay. <laughs> 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 Closing prayer and blessing. Almighty God, we just thank you for the privilege to speak to you in prayer. We thank you, Lord, for hearing our voices and for bringing us closer to you in the ups and downs of daily life. Amen. Um, and may we be moved in whatever place we find ourselves to say like Jacob, surely the Lord is in this place. Amen.